on this special Sunday. All right, we're going to get into the word um, very quickly, and then we can just thank God for all that God um, is doing. God is worthy of our praise. Amen. Pastor Dejika, please, thank you. All right, please come to the book of Lamentations. As you're going to Lamentations, we're just going to sing the steadfast love. The music can go, thank you. The steadfast love of our God never cease. Amen. The steadfast love of our God never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new, they are new. Oh, always new every morn. Singing, great is your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, singing, great is your faithfulness. The steadfast, the steadfast. Oh, for God never ceases. His mercies never come. They are new, they are new. Oh, always new every morning. your faithfulness. We're going to sing it one more time as we think of God's goodness. Come on. There stairs of my God never see his earth his mirth sees never come they are new they are new new every morning great is your faithfulness oh great is your faithfulness sing the anew the anew every morning We sing, great is your faithfulness. We say, great is your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, we say, great is your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, I say, great is your faithful come on personalize it oh Lord I say great is your faithfulness Father we give you honor we give you praise for your word that lives and abides forever we thank you that the entrance of this word always brings light always bring healing and answers questions that are genuine in our hearts father we thank you for the spirit of yours the holy spirit that is the teacher we ask you holy spirit to breathe upon the word open our mental faculties open our heart so that we can receive and put the word into action and we say thank you that every sickness or disease under the sound of my voice the word is going to bring healing where there is sickness in the name of Jesus. And above all, we will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, and the believer said, Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to change course. Come to the book of Proverbs chapter 28 instead. Proverbs chapter 28. I want to speak to us this afternoon on alignment of our faithfulness 
with God's faithfulness. Alignment of our faithfulness with God's faithfulness. It's a year of alignment as a church, and we have been learning how to be in synchronization with God because every time we agree with what God agrees with, uh, we will experience what God has already said we will experience. So here is what Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20 says, A faithful man and a faithful woman shall abound with blessings. All right? But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. So let's quickly define again. What is faithfulness? We've been looking at this subject on faithfulness. So we want to quickly define what faithfulness is. Once again, number one, faithfulness is the process of making faith a living reality in our lives or in one's life. Faith deals with assurance of God's word and all that he has done. That's what faith does. But the proof of your faith and my faith is in the area of our faithfulness. All right. We said faithfulness is how we live. We live out the truth that we have uh, concerning faith or that we have received and gleaned from the word of God. So faithfulness is how you put your faith in God into action. So we have seen that there is a direct correlation, there is a direct relationship between one's faith and one's faithfulness. We looked at first the Hebrew boys that found themselves confronted with Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar told them to make a choice whether to bow to his graven image or whether to uh, stick with their God. Please help me tell somebody next to you, it is time to stick with God. It's time to stick with God, all right? So they made a choice that we believe God is going to deliver us, but even if God doesn't deliver us, we will still not bow to the grieving image. And guess what happened? God came through for them. Please tell somebody next to you, I see God coming through for you. I, I see God breaking through for you. I see God turning every situation around. I see God establishing you. I see God perfecting that which concerns you. I see God strengthening you. Come on, can we prophesy over one another? I see God healing every sickness and disease in your family. I see God getting you that dream job. I see God blessing the works of your hand. I see God doing what only him can do in your life. I see every lies that they've spoken against you. I see the Lord bringing them to nothing. I see the Lord causing every arrow of the wicked ones to go back to wherever it came from. I see the Lord filling your heart with the joy of the Lord. I see depression far from you. I see sickness. I see mental illness. I see it far from you and your family. Why? Because I am a faithful believer and I will abound in blessing. Amen. All right. Number two, we said, what is faithfulness? We said the quality of being faithful, fidelity, for example, fidelity within the context of marriage. And then number three, we said faithfulness means unfailingly remaining loyal to someone or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice regardless of extenuating circumstances. So with the revelation that we have now been able to get concerning God's faithfulness, we now have revelation that God is faithful no matter what. How should we then respond to the faithfulness? That was what the conversation last week was around. That now that we can establish that God is faithful, there is no question about God's faithfulness. In fact, I want to submit to you once again that God's faithfulness is not what is in question in this series on faithfulness, on this teaching concerning faithfulness. It is not God's faithfulness that is on the question. It is our faithfulness that is under interrogation. Interrogation. First Corinthians chapter 10, let's see once again how powerful the faithfulness of God is. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, once again, 
I'm talking to us on alignment of our faithfulness with God's faithfulness. Because the problem is God is faithful, but oftentimes we are not faithful. So we miss the tangibility of the faithfulness of God because we have shifted in our own faithfulness. But here is what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Now, that word temptation there doesn't just mean, you know, temptation to be tempted to do, to sin, or temptation to do something wrong. It simply means there is no situation, there is no test or trial that you are facing in your life except something that is common to man except something that is common to all of us as Christians. In other words, the, one of the lies of the enemy is to convince you that you're the only one that's got issues in your life. You're the only one that's dealing with this situation. But, uh, but Papa says here, there is no temptation, there is no test or trial that is going that you're going through now, but, or, uh, but it is common to everybody. But here is now where the, 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 uh, the good news is that God is faithful. Please say that with me. God is faithful. He says, but God is faithful. In other words, as I was preparing for this, um, I put here in my notes that perhaps God's faithfulness is better experienced in our times of challenges. That God's faithfulness is better experienced in our times of challenges when we haven't been faithful. When we haven't measured up to the standard that God has set. When we haven't been faithful with our prayer life, when we haven't been faithful in our giving life, when we haven't been faithful in when we are supposed to walk in the love of God, but we choose to walk in the flesh, uh, uh, yet the Bible says God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So if you're facing it, if you're going through it, it's because I've said it before, God weighed that situation. And God says, you know what, I'm going to let this go because I know my child is going to be able to handle it because I am faithful to them. All right. He, he, he didn't allow Satan to tempt Job without Job being able to stand for God. In fact, Job then came to a conclusion that I trust God in the midst of everything that I'm going through. So there is nothing that God allows to come your way that hasn't uh, that is not going to go through the faithfulness test of God. He says, but God is faithful who will not. So his faithfulness is not just in the middle of the situation. Before you got into that trouble, God has been faithful. Amen. When you got into that trouble, God is still faithful. Amen. And when you're going to come out of that trouble, guess what? You're going to come face to face in contact with the faithfulness of God. Amen. He says, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the same temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear, uh, be able to bear it. So we began last week to dig into how we should now ex uh, respond to God's faithfulness. So I only, I think I only managed to touch on two things. Uh, the first thing I said was being faithful as a man and woman, a faithful boy or a faithful girl, being faithful as an individual. Why? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, Proverbs 20, verse 6, he says, many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. In other words, it is becoming very expensive these days to find faithful people. But can we declare this as a church together that we are a faithful people? So then I, I touched on the second one. We said the first thing was for us to be a faithful people. And then second thing I began to scratch on was being a faithful steward. First Corinthians chapter four, verse two, first Corinthians chapter four, verse two. He says, moreover, it is required. 
uh, uh, in stewards that a man be found faithful uh, and we submitted to ourselves that as Christians, we are stewards. As Christians, we are stewards of everything that we now have. Everything that I have comes from the Lord. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. In the English Standard Version, it says, For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? Please, can you help me ask your neighbor, what did you have? Or what do you have that you did not receive? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So before you get braggadocious, before you start thinking, oh, look how far I've, I've been able to walk hard and I've got all of this. I walk tireless nights and shift and I, I walk back to back and everything. Did you know it was God that gave you that breath in your nostrils to be able to walk those extra shift that you are claiming that I've worked so hard. Don't tell me to give anybody my stuff. Go and ask people in the mortuary. And they will tell you, hey, what you have is special to you. Glory to God. He says, what do you have that God did not give to you? So if you and I realize that it was God that gave us everything we have, I, I think it will humble us and put us in a position before you say my stuff, you start thinking of where the breath in your nostrils came from. And then we ask ourselves, are you faithful with the resources that God has put in your hands? We must start seeing ourselves as custodians of what belongs to God. Yeah. If I don't have the breath in my nostrils, we said last week, I won't have access to what I have right now. My breath comes from God and everything that I'm able to generate as a result of having that breath now belongs to the one who gave me the breath in the first place. And because I'm a steward, I am required to be faithful. Yes. All right. So because I'm a steward, I must be faithful because that Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4, 7 tells us, uh, uh, sorry, the first one, 1 Corinthians 4, 2, he says it is required of every steward to be faithful. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, I, I brought this to us and I think I cracked the joke on this, that some of you, uh, you know how to cook and you know you've got all of these skills, but we never saw those skills in church. Uh, those of you that always smell on you is the smell of your nice food and we never actually see the materialization of the food. And I told the steward before people come in, make sure you can't smell, smell jollof rice on them or sandwich or whatever it is. If you can smell curry goat or something on them, make Make sure they've actually got the curry goat. <laughs> don't just oppress us with the smell of your food and we don't know where the food is. All right. First Peter chapter four, verse 10, it says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We said, whatever God has gifted you with, should be used to serve others. So what are they, let, let's begin to move forward now. What are the characteristics of a faithful steward? Number one, a faithful steward lives the examined life. Amen. A faithful steward, these are the characteristics of a faithful steward now. He or she lives an examined life. For Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. He says, examine yourselves to see, check this out, to see whether you are in the faith or whether you are faithful. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are examining yourself. Am I still faithful to God? Am I still living yeah. my life by faith or have I slipped into the flesh like the Galatians church? They began in the spirit, but they almost ended in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He says, examine yourself. Where finance is concerned, examine yourself. Yeah. Where divine health is concerned, examine yourself. Where divine healing is concerned, examine yourself. Where relationship with others is concerned, examine yourself. Where loving like Jesus loves is concerned, examine yourself. Where uh, holiness and righteousness is concerned, examine yourself. Please tell somebody next to you, examine yourself. Before we start to examine you, examine yourself as a steward. Mm, come on. 
If you don't examine yourself, you open yourself to be examined by others. Yeah. You know, that's what they call internal examiners and external examiners. External examiners can't come in until internal examiners have done a due diligence. All right. So before God begins to expose your business everywhere, he has given you chance time and again to walk by faith and to get it right. A, a faithful steward has the characteristics of examining themselves. Amen. Lord, give us the grace to be conscious enough to examine ourselves. Amen. Before God exposes all our dirty stuff outside, Come on, examine yourself. And if you are like one of the churches in Revelation, uh, uh, you repent and go back to your first love and go back to where you began from. If you have slipped away from faith and now it's all about doing and trying to get God's attention, uh, you got to examine yourself if you're still living your life by faith. By faith. He says, test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Yeah. Unless, of course, you fail the test. First Corinthians chapter 11, please, verse 28. So the first characteristic of a faithful steward is that he or she examines himself or herself. First Corinthians eleven twenty eight. he says a man ought to examine himself before he eats, he's talking about communion, the bread and drinks of the cup. Referring to taking communion, even Jeremiah exhorts the people in the book of Lamentation, uh, Lamentations uh, chapter 3, verse 40. He says, let us test and examine our ways. Christians, let us test and examine our ways. Amen. Jesus is coming for a faithful people. Amen. Jesus is coming for a people that refuses to compromise. Amen. Let us examine our lives. Yes and our ways as faithful stewards. The second characteristics of a faithful steward is that he or she is faithful with little. A faithful steward is, is faithful with little. Luke chapter 16, verse 10, he says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. Yeah. And he who is unjust in what is least, his what church is unjust also in much. In other words, you don't need to pray, Lord, make me faithful when I start uh, uh, controlling millions or more money. Uh, the, 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 the prayer should be, Lord, whilst I'm on this stage of my life, I've shared this with you before, there was a time in our life that when you're giving offering, when we are giving an offering, you have to give it strategically into the receptacle, into the offering bucket, because if you drop it anyhow, the, the money will make noise. You know those kind of money you drop that makes noise? is because they are coins. <laughs> but the time comes where you are confident to put your offering for you just do a bank transfer. Glory to God. If you are faithful with little, if you're faithful with what God has given you right now, if you're faithful on that job where you are, if you're faithful with the family God has given you, if you're faithful with that one bedroom that you have, if you're faithful with that little car that you that seems like a little car right now, uh, God says you will be faithful Amen. with what is much. Amen. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Yes. Number three, what is another characteristics of a faithful steward? A faithful steward lives a life of sacrifice. Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them, uh, to them all, Luke 9, 23, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. Please say daily. Daily, daily and follow me. In other words, it's not good enough to be a Christian on Sunday morning and the rest of your week you live any which way and then you come back again to mark attendance. And no, he says you got to take off your cross daily, the cross of uh, following Jesus, the cross of denying ourselves so that we can please the master that gave his life for us on the cross of Calvary. Another area that we need to be in alignment with our faithfulness to God, we've looked at number one, to be a faithful people. Number two, we've said 
to be faithful stewards. And then we looked at different characteristics of a faithful steward. Number three area that we want our faithfulness to be in alignment is that being a faithful ambassadors or ambassador of Christ. To align our faithfulness in being an ambassador of Christ. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 17, the Bible says, A wicked messenger fallen into mischief. I'm reading from the authorized King James. But a faithful ambassador, notice that word, but a faithful ambassador. Amen. That's me also, praise the Lord, glory to God, uh, is health. He, he sees Second Corinthians place, chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible tells us in that place that we are essentially ambassadors of Christ. Therefore, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Then verse 19 says, that is God, God. God was in Christ reconciling that second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 17 uh, to 20 he says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation now then verse 20 we are ambassadors of Christ can we say that together please I'm an ambassador of Christ we are ambassadors of Christ please look at your neighbor tell them hello ambassador glory to God carry yourself like an ambassador I am not an ordinary citizen my life is precious to him so much that he made me an ambassador never let anybody tell you that you're an ordinary individual no I am an ambassador of Christ I represent him wherever I go but there is a requirement now to be a faithful ambassador as though God, back to that verse 20, 20, please, God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Not enough to be an ambassador. We need to become a faithful ambassadors of Christ. In other words, it is a faithful ambassador that is healthy. Are you a healthy ambassador? Yes. Are you a healthy ambassador? A, a healthy ambassador represents the country that they are sent by. They are not there to carry out their own agenda. They are a healthy ambassador because they realize my life, I'm not here to, to push my own um, uh, agenda. Don't be like some ambassadors that we've seen on TV, negotiating gold and all of that and doing their own business and got caught on, on, on national recording. Uh, I lost some of you there. Uh, no, be a faithful ambassador. Amen. Don't be striking deals with them. Doing dodgy business. No, be a faithful. And please tell somebody, be a faithful ambassador. Be a faithful ambassador. All right, let, let's now look at some characteristics of a faithful ambassador. Second Corinthians, Second Timothy, excuse me. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that you have heard from me. This was Paul talking to his spiritual son, Timothy that you have heard among many witnesses, look at the charge of Timothy to, he, to, to uh, of Paul to Timothy. He says, commit these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Essentially, an ambassador is the one teaching others about his master, about the kingdom that sent him or her. Let's look at some characteristics now. Number one, he or she doesn't represent himself, but the one who sent him or her. Another characteristic of a faithful ambassador is that number two, not just when it is convenient, but as commanded by the kingdom that they represent. Another characteristic of a faithful ambassador, number three, is that he or she doesn't change the message to suit himself or herself. Yes, Can you see the characteristics of a faithful ambassador? Yes. Number four, he or she understands the mission. Amen. 
And the mission is to reconcile people to God, not to judge the world, not to tell them they are condemned, they are going to hell. No, it is a good news to them that nobody should go to hell just because they didn't realize that God has already forgiven them, but all they got to do is to receive that forgiveness. That's the job of a faithful ambassador to tell them this is the good news. This is the message. Jesus died for everybody. But you've got to receive what Jesus died for. Yes, amen. Are you with me, church? Yes. So a faithful ambassador sticks with the message. Mm. Another characteristic of a faithful ambassador, number five, faithful ambassadors live their life in such a way that it doesn't bring reproach to the kingdom they are representing. They live their lives in such a way that it doesn't bring reproach so the kingdom that sent them. Let's look at the fourth area of aligning our faithfulness with God's faithfulness. Matthew chapter 25, verse 19. After a long time, master of those seven returned and settled accounts with them. Very familiar uh, uh, parable. The man who had received five talents, the one who had received five talents, came and gave the account of that five talent. You remember this, right? We all remember this parable. Uh, and then he says in verse 20, the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted to me the five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful, notice this, you have been faithful with what, with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And then his seven is someone. So we, we're, we're looking at this. Um, being a faithful servant. It's another area where we have to be in alignment with God's faithfulness. Who, who is a servant, in case you're asking? A servant is someone that does, that does someone else's biddings. Did you know that there is a dimension where our relationship with Jesus ought to be that he is the master and we are the servant? Yes, and Jesus told them, they came to Jesus asking him, who is going to be the greatest? Jesus said, whoever wants to be the greatest, let him be the greatest servant. In other words, a lot of things we pray for, we shouldn't be praying for those things. If we understand the, the, the dimension of the master and servant relationship. In other words, I am your servant. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. In a sense, I am no longer my own because a servant is not their own. They belong to the master. Before you do anything to the servant, you've got to contact the master first. So before Satan can do anything with you, he's got to get Jesus' permission. Oh my goodness. You see, when you become God's servant, when you become Jesus' servant, nobody can touch you until they have taken permission from your master. So our relationship with Jesus must not just be, I'm his friend. I'm his brother, I'm all of that. There ought to be a dimension of our lives being under the servanthood of Jesus. Let me show you some examples here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Philippians 2, 7. But he made himself of no reputation. This was Jesus. He took upon him the form of what? A servant. And was made in the likeness of man. Let's look at some more examples of servants in the Bible. Paul was a servant. Romans chapter 1 verse 1, please. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Paul saw himself as a servant of Christ. Please ask somebody next to you, are you a servant of Christ? Are you a faithful servant? Am I a faithful servant? All right, and let, let's round this thing up now in Lamentations 3, 23, 20, 22 to 23, where we began from. Prophet Jeremiah again testified that great and abundant is God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness is so great that we cannot exhaust it. 
On your worst day, God is still faithful. On your best day, God is still faithful. In fact, Apostle Paul puts it this way in his own testimony. Uh, this is another witness in this whole series on, on, on faithfulness. This is how he puts it this way in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. He says, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful for why he cannot deny himself. This was Paul's testimony. That even when you and I are not faithful, God remains faithful. Did you know that God doesn't know how to stop being faithful to anyone? This is a New Testament revelation of God's character. The truth that our God's faithfulness is not influenced by our own faithfulness. Oftentimes, when we think God has stopped being faithful to us, it's because we have stopped being faithful to him. God cannot deny himself simply means God cannot deny his character of his faithful nature. Amen. James in his own testimony, let's hear one or two more uh, witnesses and then we close. James in his own testimony in James 1, 17 to 18, he says in the King James, he says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh from the father of light with whom there is no variableness neither a shadow of turning and then from the songwriter we sang that great is your faithfulness there is no shadow of turning with thee that thou changest not thy compassions they feel near as thou has been thou forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i've needed thy hands are provided great is your faithfulness unto me Prophet Moses in his testimony concerning God's faithfulness in Deuteronomy 32 verse 4, he says, God is a rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are law and justice, a God of faithfulness without breach or deviation, just and right is he. Moses is simply telling us that God is faithful. He's so faithful that we cannot build, that we can build, excuse me, our lives on God's faithfulness. Amen. As we close in Matthew chapter 7, you remember that story that Jesus gave concerning an individual that built his house on the rock and the individual that built his house on the sun. Whoever understands the faithfulness of God has successfully built their lives on the rock is your life built on the rock or is your life built on sand it says everyone who hears these words matthew 7 24 to 27 of mine and dust them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall. Come and say, that's my house. Because it had been founded on the rock. The rock that God is faithful no matter what. The rock that I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but he is still with me. The fact that I may have not gotten everything right, but because my faith is in him, he will somehow turn all things around for my good. The fact that it doesn't matter what temptation, trial, or test that I go through, he will make a way of escape in the same temptation. Is anybody going to put their trust in God's faithfulness? Is anybody going to align their own faithfulness with God's faithfulness? Amen. Because God is ever constant. Always. He never changes. So come on, it's time to dig our heels in as believers and stop being moved by every wind of doctrine. Let, let's pray together. Father, we honor you. We want to say thank you. For how far you have walked us through how faithful you are and how faithful you will always be. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you praise that because you're faithful, we can also be faithful to you and to one another as a people. Lord, I pray for every one of us that in our walk of adventure with you, in our adventure with you, Lord, 
we will not go in and out in our faithfulness. We will be steadfast. We will be faithful in season and out of season. That Lord, no matter what storm this life may bring to us, we will be faithful to you. And should the trumpet sound, whilst we are still on this sound of eternity, we will hear that trumpet, that sound, because we are one of the faithful ones that is coming for. He says, when the Son of Man come, will he still find faith in the earth? Will he still find people that are faithful? Lord, find us faithful as a church. And we receive that grace. It is not by power, it is not by mind. Lord, sometimes the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we receive that fresh dose of grace to be faithful to you, to be faithful in our marriages, to be faithful as believers, that as a church, we don't backbite uh, against one another. We, we, we serve one another. We love one another unconditionally. We don't close our eyes to the other person's need while we are committed and faithful to one another. Lord, I pray that when this church will be described, will be described as a faithful people. People that are full of faith and they are walking out their faith with their faithfulness. We honor you, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let all the faithful people say a big amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. The God who is faithful, let's give him a big hand of praise. Amen. Please, if you have never made Jesus your Lord and your Savior, this is a good day to become born again. And all you're doing is asking Jesus to come and live his life in your heart. Maybe you're online or you're in this auditorium. Please don't leave without making the most important decision any human being will ever make. Or maybe indeed your walk with the Lord has gone really cold. You used to be on fire for God. You used to be faithful with your prayer life, with your fasting life and walking in love. And things have happened that you're just going with the flow and you're not even sure if Jesus comes right now, whether you go. Don't be in a backsliding state. Just come back home like the prodigal son. The father's arms are open to welcome you back. So two decisions that you can make right now in this atmosphere. Lord, come and be my personal Lord and Savior. Number two, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm the prodigal son that went, home, that went away and I'm back to where I belong. And I believe if you made any of those decisions, God is hearing your heart cry and he has answered your prayer. Amen. Church family, can we please rise up as we quickly close our service? Thank you so much for being patient with us. It's the last Sunday of the month, so we want to make sure we give people opportunity to testify and just give all the glory back to God for what God has done. An extra minute, five minutes, ten minutes spent in the presence of God is never wasted. You have invested it, and I believe God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Amen. Come on, let's just lift our hands as we just appreciate God one more time for the month of May. Give Him all the glory give him all the praise for everything that god accomplished in our midst that we are alive and well to see the last sunday of the month we say thank you come on if you thank him you are positioning yourself to receive what is next as we enter the sixth month of the year the half of the year you are positioning yourself to experience the best of god and to say lord i give you praise for january february march april may for all that you have done i give you glory in jesus precious name Amen and amen. Come on, lift your hand. Let me release the, uh, uh, the pastoral blessing, the priest blessing upon you. Father, I ask that your face continually rest upon these people. Thank you, Lord, that your eyes is on their sparrow. Lord, I thank you that the apple, they are the apple of your eyes, so no power of the enemy can snatch them from your presence. I decree as they go into this week, the best of God is their experience in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed or fashioned against any one of them shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against, against them in judgment, they condemn right now, and I condemn those tongues with them in the name of Jesus. Those that are believing for breakthrough this week, go and experience that breakthrough. Those that believe God for healing for themselves and their family member, go and walk in that healing this week. I decree the provision of God shall be seen in your life, and everyone that comes against you in one direction they will flee in seven directions return with the blessings of God on your life you and your children are blessed you and your children's children are blessed 
every works of darkness in this earth will never be your portion in Jesus name it is well with your soul go and walk in the fullness of the faithfulness of God in Jesus mighty name we pray and every believer shout amen amen, amen.